Namaskaram to the participants of the Belize and Yoga Festival 2021. <coughs> I was asked to um, to do a talk on autism, and this this talk is will be called the a functional <coughs> understanding of autism. So, for people that work with individuals with autism or and parents and therapists, support workers. And um, this will give you something that when you walk off, you you and see your client, and um, tomorrow or the next day you'll be able to um, <clears throat> to work and implement things quickly, immediately. So it's not theoretical; it's practical. Um, in in regards with the with the autism, um, we look at it. It's a really um different way to look at this autism and it's the way how I work. <clears throat> I developed this system because um, I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. That's the last diagnosis that I had with those. I don't really use those labels. And um, a lot of, it, lot of it was behavior. <clears throat> and when I was um, 10 years old, my mom, uh, uh, um, Mr. Singh, I used to call him, he was the ambassador for India. He was a Sikh gentleman. <clears throat> and um, my mom was telling him about some of my issues. And then um, <clears throat> he said that that he doesn't he doesn't have a disorder. That in India, there's schools for individuals like him. And it's called a Gurukula. And in the Gurukula, um, these things are fostered. And it's not a detriment. It actually becomes a boon. <clears throat> so from 10 years old, I wanted to go to India and um, to attend a Guruku, but I wasn't allowed to do. So I had to wait till I was 18. And um, <clears throat> 18 years old, I was in second year in university, in Belize University, and um, doing chemistry, biology. And then um, I, when I turned 18, I took my books, I threw it in the bin, and I left, and I left school. And um, <clears throat> flew to Los Angeles because they had a group that claimed that they had a university there, a Vedic university. And I thought, oh, that's a... And I used to go to LA for holidays. So I thought that was a facility I could go and learn because India is really far. I don't know anybody there. When I flew in into LA, I wasn't really impressed. So I, <clears throat> I moved out of the ashram there and I lived with my dad until I get my visa to go to India. When I went to India, a um, lot of the things that I, I used to be um, used to be detriments or labeled for, um, these people, they looked at totally different. So a lot of the songs that I used to hear that people might think you're crazy, <clears throat> they explain yogically that they're nadis or subtle nerves and how to work with them. <clears throat> a lot of the extra things I was seeing, so if you have someone or a child or your or your ward or your patient that has autism, you see sometimes, um, it's a common thing that they do doing now. It, these days you see a lot of different um, symptomologies, but they just check the camera, they take their hands and they put it on the eye like that. Mm -hmm. And you see they pull, push, push, push pressure on the eye. And then after that, they look up. <clears throat> so I used to do that. But in, in the Guru Kula, you learn Trataka, where you learn how to put pressure on the eye and you get an intern you could see the internal sun or you could look at the external sun till it becomes black and then colors start to come out they call that trataka kriya um, <clears throat> so a lot of these things and um, the extra heat that was in my spine they said was glandular fever they um, taught how to regulate that heat so they changed my view <clears throat> when I became a qualified therapist. It changed my view. Excuse my coughing. I was um, sick for a few days, just getting better. But um, <clears throat> when it changed, when I became a therapist, it made me look at disorders differently and don't see them as disease. <clears throat> I see them more as a, um, that uncontrolled faculties in the body. And so I approach autism totally, totally, and when I work with autism, I, I approach it totally differently. 
I started to work with autism in 2004 as a therapy assist and then became a fully qualified therapist, <clears throat> occupational therapist, and before that, osteopath with the Department of Disability. And the first few years, I worked with the things that I had from university. So if the child didn't want to eat, we used to implement sensory diet, all these big programs. And what, what, I understand, what a lot of the parents I was seeing, <clears throat> they, we used to work, the group was an um, integrated group. So we worked from age, <clears throat> we worked from age zero to 100 plus. And so you get the older parents, they heard and seen everything. They seen the diet, they seen the tests, the vitamins, the injections, the medication. <clears throat> the, all the other kind of therapies they tried and done all of that so they weren't impressed with those kinds of things so um, it was actually a parent that I work with changed my view because I was very orthodox and he had a child that was 11 and the child wouldn't sleep <clears throat> in, the, in the night he would stand in the corner with his face in the corner and tip it all so his calves was really big and um, <clears throat> so I worked on him and I built rapport with him, everything, and what does technical stuff from university. And then I, I went and visited my family in Belize. And when I came back, um, the boy wasn't doing it anymore. And dad looked at me sheepish and he didn't want to say because then it was illegal. And then he said, um, well, I know I could trust you. And he said, um, I've been using ZLE. And I've been using CBD oil. It was illegal in Australia then. And, and I grew up in Belize. In conservative family, marijuana is bad. There's no medicinal um, value, blah, 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 all that things, yeah? And um, after that, I changed my view on that really quick. So a lot of the parents started to use CBD and got a lot of good results with it and it's really <clears throat> So then after that, I was like, oh, oh this. And I, I, when they told me CBD, instead of, criticized cannabis. I went on research and then I started to look into things and saw all oh, the research on cannabis isn't proper, isn't proper at all. <clears throat> I need to um, change my paradigm. So then after that, <clears throat> my mind opened. I was looking for, looking for things. And then um, we do regular training in the department and I attended a training and I had a four days training big 30 minute block, 40 minute block, and you're just like blah, 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 the same thing over and over. But on the Friday, they had a 15 minute section for one person from England, and it's um, intensive interaction. And in that, <clears throat> the person had, they gave him 15 minutes and in short, five minutes. So he had five videos, three videos with um, three minutes each, and he showed they had a, one girl was modulating, like it's a common thing with autism. Uh, another person was like uh, hitting themselves, hitting themselves. And the other person was just blank, like <clears throat> so medicated. This person turned internally and just disappeared. And in his video, he showed how he brought them out of that within three minutes and interacted with them. They smile, everything, and the parents are like, wow, I never seen this. My child look into the eye of a person. Mm -hmm. and other people that work with that, someone with autism knows this thing. So they're like, what the hell, you know? And I looked at that and people was walking out because it was the last thing on a Friday. And I, and I look in the bottom of the bag, one, and one little leaflet. And I was like, wow, and this is what I'm looking for. Everybody walked off. I was like, it was full conference. I was maybe like 10 people in there. Some was on the phone. But I was like, I think I was looking and I was like, wow, this, this is it. This is it. How he broke. And he had three rules. Imitate. And take the lead. Implement your strategy. So all these three built rapport to the person. And what he explained is that with a child with autism is a different language, different culture, different being, way of thinking. And even a parent that with their child for 40 years, having introduced themselves according to the, the standard of the person with autism. So they don't know you. You don't have rapport to them. They don't have, they're not gonna do anything for you. So you need to build that rapport. <clears throat> Once I build that rapport, majority of what I'm going to say, I learned from 
parents that I taught and then they came back, they took it and they made their own way and they took it and they brought it back and I, I listened and wow, wow, okay, and I gathered my own information on the ground from parents, no research, no fancy stuff, on the ground, parent, the child hurting themselves, going into the shower and skin melting off because they don't feel the heat from the hot shower and their life turns around with different things, yeah, and then I, I was just like, I'm on a track here. How I, I I didn't do research or anything. I don't care to do research. You know, I have my own world on how I perceive things. And when I see someone in autism, I click with them. That's my research. That's my validity. I know I did this university stuff before. Now parents don't care about your university. Or people with autism don't care. They care about effect. So um, they did all these things, and I was um, and when they when they did all the the autism, the, all this stuff and it works, I, I started to learn from them and then I was just like, oh, let me try to collate things and teach it to us. So I got students from university and taught them, they got effect. <clears throat> and I was like, oh, you're on to something here. The most important thing was when I finished with these parents, because we used to get the goal and the parents were self-sufficient, they said, oh, we'd like to give you something, but the department was very strict with gifts and stuff. And I said, well, they kind of said give, but if you want to do something, because I'm a bit left field, so I was getting a lot of flack in the department. And I said, just write a letter of appreciation to the department. So, so many letters there, right, right, right. And I got called into a meeting one day, and then the people, the staff, the supervisors, and like that, they said, one supervisor, <coughs> he's been department disability 40 years, and all this different form. He said, 40 years, I never seen someone get so much letter of appreciation from these parents. That's my validity. That's my certification. I'm not going to sit here and claim my degree or anything. That doesn't mean anything to people with autism and their carers. It's just the base of the knowledge. I live it. I still have tics. My wife teased me about it. I have um, verbal tics, nasal tics. Um, still see, hear things. But how I do yoga, this is all yogic stuff. So so the, um, I work with mental health too. So what you need to understand is in shamanic cultures, in yogic cultures, people with autism are worshipped and respected. You know, they're not disease that should be medicated and locked away. That, that outlook alone, and I'll give example, there's so much stuff, but they just asked me to put in a little bit of time. There's so much stuff I could say, but we'll keep on the topic. But all I could say is this, that, that someone with autism could be like this and don't have um, no eye contact or anything, but inside they know heaps. They're not vegetables, they're super people, and be careful what you're saying near them because you could cut the bridge with them. It's like a person is trapped inside a machine that they don't have control of. They could hear, pick up all the inputs, everything, and um, <clears throat> but they can't express. And people say the disease, they don't make that mistake. These people are super people without control of their powers. I did, I had to go to India, <coughs> lived in India <coughs> for 10 years to learn how to master this condition, this disease, this, this syndrome, disorder, whatever they want to call it. And you have a lot of advantage, but it has a lot of deficits if you don't know how to control. So now we're getting into the functional understanding of autism. <laughs> I think that was important so you understand this isn't just doesn't a mainstream thing this is a yogic approach lived approach to it <clears throat> so it, when you have a problem in Vedic culture yogi, which yogic culture is a minor part so many other branches of philosophy <clears throat> when you have a problem Sanskrit everything is in the word if you, in English, we, they said bird, so on, the, on the, um, the blackboard, they have a picture of the bird and they have the word bird, 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 and they just drill it into your head like that. It's one of, it's a good language for commerce, but it's not good for developing the brain. In Sanskrit, you could listen to the word for different types of birds and you could picture how they look. It tells you. So in English, it's called, if you're going to use like most of us using English every time. You want to use English, you need to learn epidemiology. You need to learn the history of the words that you're using. 
<coughs> so these people before 1950 they were dialectically trained so they're very intelligent people you know we're not producing a lot of geniuses through this pyramidal system these days but the person that picked that name autism they didn't just uh, pick the name you know <coughs> so two things I say a functional um, understanding of autism so let's look at autism autism come from the word the Greek word autos means self <coughs> so in existential psychology you have a circle so here you have a circle um, <coughs> So in essential um, psychology, this is the self here, and then um, other cells are outside, but they're covered by bodies. When someone has profound autism, their self is restricted to the center line. So this is this center line is where all the vitals is, and then. Um, so a lot of those um, people with autism with pro real profound autism, you don't see much of them. I work with them, they're, they're all crippled. They, they look like they're disabled. They, because the center line, they understand as them. So like <clears throat> you understand yourself as the being female or male, and you have your name, you have your designations and stuff. They're one, they don't, they don't, the self is not their hand. This material self is not their hand. It's this center line. So this is the hands, their hair, and they're, they're not working. The legs not working. They're crippled. And so that we, most people would think that they're crippled. But I know some of these, I used to work with, we work in the uh, non rock school of the deaf and blind. To get in there, you have to be deaf and blind. Then they have, most of the kids in there had 17 diagnoses. I would go in and then the wheelchair like this, not move cripple, and I would go in and I say, Yeah, it's going and you see in their eyes like a little quiver, the amount of appreciation and love they have. They express it in. So they're there and they're just like me and you moving our hands and doing yoga or whatever, walking and like that. They're there. <coughs> they identified it here. So to us they're crippled. So it's not their fault. It's our job to understand that they're there and it's our job to explain expand that autos. Your therapy is really expanding the autos, the concept of self. For high autism, the self is here. It's a little bit quirky with the hand, a lot of hidden because they're a bit disconnected with different parts of the body. Everybody is unique. So what the examples I'm giving, you might be, oh, I never seen someone, I got someone like this here. So it could be different. Some people have a body okay, the legs different. Um, then <clears throat> with moderate, which is a difficult one, they're like half normal people and half people with autism and the quirky fine motor and quirky socialization. And then you have um, high functioning like Asperger's, autism, they're here. So their range of empathy is here. They, they could control their body good, they could move, you know, all the yoga mudras and stuff, they help you to control the body easily. No fine motor is here, <coughs> but a quirky with socialization. Me, parties with over 10 people, I can't attend. But going to temples, I could go to a temple with billions, millions of people, doesn't matter to me. But go to pubs, never did that. Can I do pubs, drunk people, and um, hear too much, see too much. Um, rashes, heat, rashes, and like that. Um, and, the norm, and then now you have the normal empathetic range of self and others. Normal women, <coughs> the empathetic range is 17 feet. Normal men, empathetic range is 7 feet. So within 7 feet, if something's going on, I empathetically can connect it to it and understand and feel how it's going. Women, like if my wife sit here and someone is out of my range and they're, they're crying or whatever, I'm just like, mm. my wife will go, oh, what's going on? You know, generally women, the empathetic range is longer. In yoga speak, <laughs> it's how the aura spreads. So men, seven feet, women, 14 feet. So this material world in yoga is called Devilo, one of the names is Devilo. 
mm-hmm. Hirangarba diseases, but one of the name is develop is the, the realm of women. So in this material world that we perceive the woman body, the woman body is superior. <clears throat> this isn't a feminist masculine nonsense. I don't get into that crap. We're just talking yogic. Women anger nine times more in this is yogic. This is um Isha Upanishad, Taichu Upanishad, Chandra Upanishad. And the happiness nine times more, the sorrow nine times more, emotions nine times more, and because of the emotion is that sometimes they get override by the emotions, and we say in yoga they use they lose their kriya, they lose their ability to control this extra power, and that's why it seems women are in are weaker and whatever these days, you know, but um, yogically. Metaphysically speaking, the woman body is stronger. Why? Because the whole culture depends on women. And um, why women should do yoga, do yagyas and stuff? Because they're the one born in the kids. And so in the in the Natamuni Yoga Rahasya it says if the field is not fertile and seedy and dry, then what is gonna produce? So right now in, in when the Brits British they went to India, they made it patriarchal. So if you look at Indian culture, it's like Brahminical, patriarchal. It wasn't like that before. This is a British thing. And <clears throat> so a lot of the Brahminical oh, women can't do yagyas, can't do pujas, can't do this, can't do that. But they're the first guru. The child is with them for a big portion in the beginning of their life. So if they don't know anything, then that helps you end up with India. You have a place. With so much potential filled with half half big people trying to be westerners. So what you so the woman is very very important because they could produce another life. So that's why the female body needs all that extra. Yeah. So the empathetic range is bigger. The aura, if you look at the aura that the, the chakras and the emotion they combine, it pushes out to 14 feet. Men, seven feet. Um, <coughs> high functioning autism, Asperger, Asperger syndrome, they are around three feet. Um, low autism, they are here, so fine motor and like that. Moderate, toughest one, they are here. And um, the high autism here, and profound autism is the midline, they look like they're crippled. So, this is, so that's what autism means. So when you're doing your therapy, when you're working with someone with autism, you're trying to expand the empathetic range. That's all. <clears throat> a lot of the yoga practice, that's what it does. So that's why I implement a lot of yoga exercises and breathing, co-work and stuff into my therapy as well, plus proper eating and like that. <laughs> anyway, so Michelle asked me to talk about the autism. So now, <clears throat> what is autism? What causes autism? This is where the functionality comes in. Oh, um, before understanding, so the word understanding is self-explanatory. Un- understand. So understanding came is a printer's term. <clears throat> so in Germany, when they would go and they want to expand their printing, they would put the printers on the top floor. What they would do, they would come underneath and stand under and they would expand. Ex, um, what call, um, analyze and study underneath the floor to see if the floor could hold the weight of the printers. Understanding. So understanding, you get, in, get underneath something, have a nice foundation, and then you analyze it like that. And so that's how understanding is. And functional, functional, it means it's all in front. <coughs> goes back to Sanskrit as well, but you don't get into that, we could easily divert. So under that, it means that you could do, it's working, you could do something, and it's not just, oh, I understand, and then you sit there. What's the use? I could understand so much thing, but if I can't, this is, this is the danger with the way how we do yoga in the West today. We know a whole lot of things, but there's no effect. You know, I read this, I do this, I do this, but there's no effect. And that's why in the Eastern culture, they always taught arts. Because when you get enlightened, and if your body holds together, when you come back into this world, you're going to be crazy. You're going to take up a book and be like, hey, there's a divine truth here. And then people look at it, it's just a book. You know, and then you, you pick this and you like, you read this one, oh, this is the eternal song. And then you read people, it's like, oh, it's just a baby thing. 
So you need an art to maybe art to paint what you see, music to play what you realize, and people could sense it. So you need an art. So that's where the functionality comes in. The um, so a functional understanding of artism. So the first functional artist understanding of artism is what causes it. Artism has one cause, one one cause, and fourteen thing causes that one cause. Depends on people. The body is sturdy, so it's a combination. <clears throat> one cause. When you look at when you do, you go to your natural part, you do here follicle tests and stuff. When you look, you'll find that everybody you see with autism diagnosis and match the symptomologies and stuff, they all have one thing in common. They have low glutathione. Glutathione is the most important protein, <clears throat> which is a big part of your immune system. But in regards to the brain, and when we say brain, we're not talking about the critical brain only, we're calling about the, talking about the enteric brain, the gut brain. Those two brains, when you look at them, they're low in glutathione, and glutathione helps the brain to flush out heavy metals from the body. Hence, the issue itself on others, if you have a lot of cambrium, copper, lead, mercury, aluminium, in your brain, brains, two brains, number one, you have a lot of other little ones, we don't get into those in yoga. And um, when you have them, and they, we have a healthy person has glutathione, it flushes it out, so your empathetic range is normal. People with autism, depending <coughs> on the level, which the way they are, they have an inability to flush heavy metals from their brains. And when they do that, then there's a problem with self on others. So that's the cause of autism, is low level of glutathione because the glutathione is used to self flush the neural, neural matter in the brains that we have. The two main brains is the critical brain, secondary, and the enteric brain, primary. <clears throat> when we see someone and a bit dodgy, we're like, oh, I'm a bit dodgy. We don't say, oh, I have a thinky feeling, but we say we have a gut feeling. When you're going to do a speech or something, you'll be like, oh, I got butterfly in my stomach. You know, say you got butterfly in your head. So everything is stomach, stomach fit, stomach. So this is this brain is a sturdy brain. When we get hit, boxing or whatever, we get knocked out. This brain keeps you going. So since, two, nine, since 2017, the paradigm shift. This was the primary brain. Now it shift because this brain builds everything through bacteria, through gut bacteria. So gut health is for autism. So now the glutathione, what could decrease the glutathione? <clears throat> so you have, so you know the cause of autism, Tara? What, what decreased the, um, the glutathione? 14 things. And what they did, they look at, in Czech, Canada, America, Mexico, they look at 50,000 kids. And they did blood, hair, follicle test, blood test, full physicals, everything. And then they look and they qualify them. So the order is like this. The number one thing when they look, they're like 97% of these kids, not all. So these things, as a parent, as a carer, along with your client that has autism, you have to be sharp. You can't get into lock into ism. Yeah, yeah, he said this, so it's this. I know some kids that don't have number one. They, they, they're sweet. So you, you can't, and not one, well, these days you might say, well, next in the winter coming in the Northern Hemisphere because of something going around right now, people get in, and you find immune systems are so trash, you find one thing could get them. But <clears throat> pre, pre the last two years, Human body is so sturdy, it will take a combination. But 97% of the children they look at, they found they had candida. I won't get into this too much because um, you just get your mind introduced to it and you can go research by yourself. <coughs> so I'll lift this up. <coughs> so candida. Candida, <coughs> number one, candida is a fungus. And uh, you know, everybody knows Candida. 
in developed countries, 70% of women have candida infestation. I talked about this in Belize on TV show when I was there. You could refer to those for more detail. But the candida comes in, go into your gut, and then let go tentacles, and then it starts to turn in your gut and bore holes, and that's how you get the leaky gut syndrome. A lot of stuff you're going to doctor, getting better, I'm not getting better, I'm not getting better. Go see an integrated doctor or naturopath to check if you have leaky gut syndrome. I'm just saying if you have something difficult, especially if you took a lot of antibiotics or chemo or a lot of medication or whatever, go check. A lot of the ailments they're dropping all kind of these names on is because of leaky gut syndrome caused by candida. Now with women, <clears throat> when you become pregnant, and when you become pregnant, you produce a lot of progesterone. I won't say a lot about this guy. I have to go through them and keep within the time limit. Um, <clears throat> the progesterone is um, can you have estrogen and progesterone. When you get pregnant, you produce a lot of progesterone. Progesterone so happens to be the food that can be the like. And that's why a lot of the food in these fast food places and like that, the, the genetic structure is similar to progesterone and they use a lot of sugar in the bread, in the meat, in the lettuce, in everything they use sugar because candida also like sugar. So um, <clears throat> when you're pregnant, you produce a lot of can candida. So much so some women, they have to get out their gallbladder, guess, and they get gestational diabetes, all kind of stuff. That's, you know, it's so infested. When you have an infestation of candida, when the child, if it's um, cesarean, it, it gets infested here. Once it goes the birth go, the candida, they adjust. But let's just look at normal birth. When the child is coming through the elementary canal, all from women, again, why women is the superior body in this world, from the lady's mom, her mom's mom's mom, mom, all the way, but all the female, all the diseases they get, the blueprints come in the elementary canal, and when the baby comes through the canal, it rubs on the body of the baby, and the baby get all the inheritance of the immune system. Now, <coughs> candida, when candida when you get a candida infestation, it lines the elementary canal. When the child goes through, it infestate the child that way. Um, I was going to say something with the um, candida. Oh, with that one. Uh, just, you know. anyway. So it um, goes through, and then after you get the, can the infestation like that, a lot of these children with autism, they have candida infestation. Your body has to redirect a lot of glutathione towards dealing with the candida and you lose your stores of glutathione you're unable to flush your brains and you get problem with self and other autos or autism so <clears throat> remember when we were younger they said um the appendix is useless so your body is sharp in case there's a traumatic incident, in case there's some poison, in case there's something that wiped out all your gut biome, the useless appendix that they're cutting out, cutting out um, for the six. So um, a lot of people my age, you know, they were cutting out tonsils, all this of useless, they just extra bits. Nah, be useless to them, to an ignorant person or a profession that doesn't know. <clears throat> they, um, wipe out all of this, the appendix would have all your species of um, microbiome in the inner form and if something like that happened, it would release and then you get back again. <clears throat> so a lot of people lost that. Their parents lost it. So they're getting bodies that are inferior in regards to gut biome. They're taking antibiotics or everything. They get a sniffle antibiotics and take all these harsh medications just like that, you know, a headache medication rips up the um, destroy the stomach floor so your stomach floor goes down candida and other parasites go up you're dead your glutathione get directed towards it and you find late onset autism i know a lot of people expert businessmen this is it they end up autistic in group homes because they so your gut biome is important <coughs> so that's it that's what the candida do. There's a lot of stuff with candida, how to deal with candida, candida diets, all tough. I don't want to get into there because I could just get stuck. That was just number one. <coughs> so, 
So now, oh, just before, very importantly, when you there's a lot of scam industry in autism where people selling glutathione. Oh, you know it, but it's glutathione. If you take glutathione like that, the, all the cells in the mouth will take it. You won't even reach anywhere. So you have to take the glutathione in the amino acid form, which is um, acetylcysteine (NAC) or NAD, and you take it, and then it goes in your body. Your body metabolizes the glutathione. In it. That's how you supplement it. You can't take glutathione straight unless it's done a certain way. It's like you have to prepare that there's glutathione experts and stuff. If you want to see them, that's up to you. Okay, but um, just stay buying glutathione on the web. Nah, that one where you need to get acetyl system. How this COVID is going around, this is one of the protocols apart from vaccination, it's not working crash hard, um, that people are using with the ivermectin and the hydroxychloroquine and like that, that they're using in India and stuff because they saw them. I've seen they're using ivermectin and stuff in El Salvador behind you guys. They're giving people pack with ivermectin. So, um, <coughs> When they, you also have in there NAC, acetylcysteine, and that your body produces glutathione. Ta-da! Even COVID, you need glutathione. <coughs> so, that's Candida. Um, so, we go. The second one is vaccinations. And a lot of the kids <coughs> that they check, they have a high level of viruses. And the viruses are naturally not naturally present in the body. They're introduced by, by viral agents and mosquitoes or whatever, or most of the kids by vaccination. And there's a whole big topic with the vaccination. I just keep it technical. It's a lot of stuff. <clears throat> but we let's just look at the so it vaccine vaccines, they have the components. You have the weekend vaccine, not the, the COVID one is a new type. The weak weekend vaccine, but you know, look at that. That's all kind of controversy. That and um, and so again, this I'm not saying this isn't saying that this is the issue that stress glutathione, low glutathione can't clean the brain. You have problem with self and other. I'm not saying vaccination causes autism. I'm saying the the components of the vaccine, the stress, the glutathione stocks in your body and you have problem with flushing out heavy metals on the brain you have problem with self and other Gluta low glutathione is the cause of autism different things stress that stuff so please understand that all right there's some people emotion about this nonsense i don't got no time for that and um, so let's you have components they have adjuvants they have um, um, um stabilizers to get it to the target area they wanted to get it and you got preservatives let's just look at preservatives today before 1996 they used thermosorol which was mercury based now with the thermosorol and a lot of parents started to have a stick up a stink with it so what they did they got rid of the thermosorol but then now they replaced the <coughs> the how they want to keep the shelf life for the vaccine they replaced it with aluminum peroxide generally and different derivatives of aluminum any biochemist, I did biochemistry in the University of Belize, will tell you if where mercury is in the body, it will attract aluminum and vice versa. So your mercury get from car smoke, from eating the type of food you eat and all this kind of stuff. So if you're putting aluminum peroxide as a preservative in a vaccine, then it attracts mercury. And then you have a you have a stress on your immune system, your body has to redirect glutathione to it, and you lose your stock of glutathione for flushing out your brains, and then you have problem with self and other. <clears throat> That's just a preservative. The adjuvants, the stabilizers and stuff, they do the same thing. But there's a quick look at the viruses. All the different types of viruses, they weaken, and they put them in, they put them in, um, in tissues such as rios monkey, rios monkey liver, that's a popular one, heart liver, and um, human and bovine fetal tissue, bovine infused fetal tissue. I don't know how they thought about this. So they take the fetal tissue from a aborted calf and they mix it in a solution, they inject it into the heart of the mother, and then it forms a, a cyst, they take that growth and then they make it off like that. So you're getting all these weird kind of concoction with viruses in different states that wouldn't normally be in a body. 
Now your glutathione stores has to be redirected to them. You have low glutathione in the brain. You have, you're not flushing out heavy metals. You have problem with self and others. So please understand that. I'm not saying candida cause autism. I'm not saying vaccination cause autism. I just explained how they did. Glutathione, low glutathione, low immune system, disarm the immune system that can't flush the brains of heavy metal is the cause of autism. That's one, candida. Two, vaccination, the viruses and different components of the vaccine stress glutathione stops. Please understand that. If not, whatever. And then now we go to number three. <clears throat> So this is the whole thing here. Number three, Lyme disease. So there's a place in Connecticut, <coughs> in America, and the place is called Lyme, and this disease is named after um, in the 1800s, like turn of 1800s, early 1900s. They, <coughs> it was a bacteria. So I'll find the name of the Borilla bacteria. It infestated cats, and the cats play the owner, and the owner gets it. And this bacteria goes in, hack your nerves, and then you find a lot of the, you know, in Australia, they don't accept that Lyme disease is innate to Australia. But the problem is you have a lot of people catching Lyme disease that didn't even have a passport in their life. They never went overseas and they caught it. For They don't want to accept that it's here for some reason. There is a reason because a lot of the diseases that we have you find a lot of them, the symptomology of Lyme disease, one of them is autism. You'll be like, hey, that looks like when somebody has Lyme disease, then or they, when are they like this? You know, anybody work with autism, you know, they same symptomologies. And anybody work with autism, if you see someone in Lyme disease, you'll be like, I wonder if these are similar. So again, it's not everybody, but 97% of the kids had candida. And 94% of the tests, they had viruses that weren't present. They got via vaccinations and so. And then number, this is number three on the list, is they have this bacteria, bacteria infestation. Again, that doesn't cause autism. Your glutathione stops in your immune system is directed towards it. It depletes, there's not enough to clean your brain. You have problem with self and other autism. Okay, so we keep it like that and we go through this a little bit quicker. <clears throat> Number four, biofilms. Again, anybody have a little biology training, you understand. You got the bacteria <clears throat> or the virus goes in. Viruses are not alive. They're not living beings. It's like a AI, a biological AI that nature does. And your body gets, they take advantage of your body. So um, so don't remember that a lot of these things going on with COVID right now, it's like viruses flying through the air, coming at you. Viruses are not alive. Just get that to your head. This is all 1950 kind of belief. New understanding of viruses is totally different. So anyway, bacteria especially and viruses, <coughs> they go into your body and then your immune system, there's a lock on Everybody knows biology, they have that. There's a lock on key things. So the immune system going around, locks onto a virus. Hey, oops, I'm designed for a click. De um, deregulate them, kill them. So what they do, they're like, hmm, if we go around the way how we look in the body, the immune security team going to catch us, the blood and wherever, and they're going to kill us. So let's shed our skin, take some food, take some fibrin in the, in the blood and food nutrients from the gut, Take and we cover ourselves with that. So they're bacteria, but they look like food and look like part of your body in your immune system. And so your body can't recognize them. Very difficult to deal with. They're number four. So again, we're going hierarchy. What was most present in those 50,000 kids? Lays, 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 lays. This is number four. Okay, biofilms. <clears throat> If you want more detail, we're going to detail, but even <clears throat> if we cover this, it's, it's just a lot, you know? Five, number five again, is different types of viruses. Again, I um, so you got vaccination, and five is the viruses. Majority of the viruses, we got viruses because the immune system so wrong. We're running to antibiotics with so much stuff. 
for any little thing using powerful antibiotics for any little thing, the immune system run down, the viruses and bacteria, they mod modifying, mutating and changing how they attack. And again, your glucathione gets directed towards those systems and the stop goes, you can't clean the brain, the brains, neural tissue, we have problem with self and other autos, autism. So number five is viruses. <clears throat> number six is genetics. And this is the one that mainstream generally says. <clears throat> so why there's more boys, there's two reasons why there's genetics and testosterone. Why there's, if you go to a special school, I covered three special schools as a pilot program on this system that I made. I went into school, the thing was to reduce incidence of aggression and teachers and injuries. I consulted, I memorized the files for over 900 kids, 260 staff. So a person asked me about a child, advice immediately. For the pilot was for three years, we met our goal in an year and a half, teacher injuries reduced. <clears throat> um, in these schools, you find majority is males. Again, women body is 30, David Oak, we have women are XX chromosome. <clears throat> Run one X mutates, the other one takes over. Males are XY. One X mutates because autism is an X chromosomal disorder. You can get into that. <clears throat> there's a Y, there's no replacement, so that's why boys are susceptible, susceptible to more. Okay? Genetics. <clears throat> so you find some genetic components in Israel, you see a lot of that, a lot of the places where people marry close. Um, <clears throat> Lebanese in Australia here yeah, have a lot of Lebanese, Afghani, a lot of um, people from Islamic background, they marry close cousins and stuff, you know. So there is a genetic component where it's listed as number six, mainstream has it as number one. Everybody is going to check on parents, show me genetic reports and never find anything genetic in, wrong in the brain. <clears throat> so with the gen so then now number seven is vitamin D. So, <clears throat> how they put vitamin D on the list, good way to make you understand. People in Somalia and Afghanistan, especially Somalia, they have a um, low incidence of autism in the world. But when they migrate to Canada, uh, Finland, Scandinavia, Finland, all those upper northern hemisphere places, when they migrate there, they become the highest. <clears throat> so, their body, because they're not absorbing a lot of vitamin D, which your body takes, helps to metabolize glutathione. There's not enough glutathione in the body to flush the heavy metals of the brain. You have problem itself and others. Autism. Okay, so vitamin D. Number eight, <clears throat> immune dysregulation. We know these, some of these as um, muscular sclerosis. So when your immune system, because of the biofilm, your immune system is like, they got guys hiding here, we don't know who it is. And um, let's attack it. So like multiple sclerosis, your your brain, your immune system, use glutathione, not to self flush the brain, to attack the nerve and the nerve covering. So it's like a wire. You peel the wire, the rubber off the wire that, that's myelin, and it peels it off, and then now your wire is exposed to all the fluids and everything in the body, like the way outside to nature, it's gonna spark, and then you get more, you get multiple sclerosis. So, immune dysregulation because there's not enough glutathione, your immune system is all dysregulated because there's not enough glutathione, it starts to attack its own components, and then not enough if you self flush the brain, you have problems with self and other autism. Number eight, number nine, pasteurized milk. <clears throat> <clears throat> with the with the pasteurized milk and um, other studies indicate that both autism and schizophrenia may be linked to your inability to properly break down a protein found in milk. Personally, I believe this is related to pasteurized milk, and I've seen many autistic children thrive on raw milk products, especially fermented ones like kefir and yogurt. So, what happened? With the way how they pasteurize the milk, they make the casein, the protein in the in the milk, the casein. If you study a brain and you inject the body with 
Methamphetamines in light salt. You take pasteurized milk, especially that crop in the shops, is which is um, liquid pus. I refer to it like that. Cows to to is a yogic culture to take care of cows. Cows are similar and level to human whales, dolphins, horses. In India, in Vedic culture, they're non-human humans. Killing them, harming them is the same kind of legislation, killing, harming a human. And nurturing them and, and them, they come and they breed, produce milk, milk all year round, and force sterilize them, use the fire to, to, to sterilize, work them till they die, kill them. An animal that knows their life is like that, they're not happy, they're not gonna produce proper milk. I lived in India and the milk that we consume there, when you look, you see gold particles on it. It's like very refined milk, natural sweet and stuff. And the cow wants to give, they give the, they give the calf first and when there's no cow, they're gonna rest the cow. But here it's produced, produced, got the machine on them and they're stuck in the pen and they're gonna die anyways when they get, can't produce anymore. That's liquid pus. And so that case in India is like methamphetamines to the brain. And then the glutathione starts as be directed towards it. You don't have enough to flush your brain, you have problems with self and others. Autism. <coughs> Pyluria. You'll find a lot of kids with autism. It's cold, cold outside, no shirt. Warm, warm, warm. And <coughs> I always tell parents this when the kids like this, they're not crazy. Autistic kids are not suicidal. When they're hitting themselves, they're in pain. I have a child. I, the mom had, he was on medic. He's I saw him when he's 25. I saw him in the schools and I work, work him when I never was, he was always okay there. But he was injured from young, antibiotics, then then that caused stress, glutathione stuff, started to manifest um, art, art, artistic symptomologies. They started to give medication. He was a heavy class, four to six blue drugs, all the way up to 25. And I spoke with the mom. The mom had mental stuff as well. She got off herself, got him off, started to change the diet, did the whole protocol, everything. I, she didn't wean him off the medication properly. I told her, be careful. Anyway, she just cold turkey and her son cold turkey. Took two years to detox properly because he didn't follow the protocols, but it was hell. Anyways, everything okay. <clears throat> he has a stutter, so the speech is really hard, so I need speech therapy. But panic attacks because he would flip out and then we found out from a support worker that used to work in the facility. They would put him in a room and they would hold him down and so they gave him a mental health thing. So when I, so after they did all the drugs and now he's all natural, detox, everything, it's hidden his heart, hidden him. And the mom's why he's doing it? And I said, because he's in pain, pyluria. It's like a kind of heat we would, and that's what's getting me in my spine. My spine would be so hot when my wife first met me. The touch is like, like a pot. And in yoga, you learn how to cycle that, you know? But when it's going through, it's still hot. Like right now, I'm talking to you guys. I'm getting pumped. It's like heat coming up. And then it's like mist around my head. It's really hot. But when I finish, I do some alternative breathing. Calm down. When I told my teacher I was in India, I was just like, yeah, but my body hot. He's like, do this, do this. And I did body cool in the West, take this medication, take this, make it worse. So anyways, he hit his heart, hit his heart, I told the mom, and she tried all kind of stuff. It's a lot of trial and error. She picked on zeolite. And the best zeolite is from Hawaii. Zeolite is from when hot lava reaches sea water. And then there's a white foam in between, they collect that, that's zeolite. When you look at a molecular structure, it looks like a honeycomb structure. So when it goes to your body, your system, your blood, and your limb, etc., it could hold way, it could detox you way more because it has way more surface area. She gave him that, just like me, because that's the mama I told you the child was standing on tippy toe, the dad gave zeolite and CBD oil. So I, I was like, CBD oil, zeolite. I got a course on my friend, he sent from Hawaii, liquid one. I did. When I used to close my eyes, I would feel I'm big. I was like, Hulk, <laughs> like off. And I think the zeolite, the first bottle, I could, and now I know the dimensions of my body. It's not off. My one was off before. My body got cool, cooler, 
And now I just keep my body alkaline by doing a cert certain things that work in magic for me. <clears throat> Trial and error. My diet also had to tweak, became a yogic diet eventually. You know, Most of these people, autistic kids, children with autism will come towards yogic diet eventually. Anyway, but the heat goes. So this child heart, I went on Sime last, and I see him every other Wednesday. <clears throat> the other one, the mom say he's hitting his legs. But here is okay, no pain. When I went last week Wednesday, he's hitting near his knees. So the body is just cooling down, cooling down. So zeal for him was magic. He tried a lot of stuff that did good for two weeks and flop. Or for an air then flop. But the zeal really getting rid of it. No panic attacks. <coughs> Hallelujah. Number 10. Number 11, EMF, electromagnetic frequencies. Um, behind the drum. Oh, you see the plug there where my finger is, there's a plug. When I go into home and I modify the environment, I move the bed head away from any of these plugs. Um, mobiles and stuff like that. So I use pink plates, I use different kinds of crystals in yogi culture in Garuda Purana. G, I have it here. These are the Puranas. The green books there is Garuda Puran, three book. In there, it tells you how, talks about the origin, the yogic origin history of gems, how they came to the earth, how you use them, how you empower them, and stuff. So I have crystals. Can we have five G around now? So I have uh, crystals around the house. Everybody will have to get into that. And it'll be six G, seven G, eight G. It does go G G G Gs, and um, so you have to protect your your system. These kids. EMF, EMF, the best one I find is cheap. <clears throat> in Melbourne, they have titanium. Titanium is expensive. Any metal, I use alum aluminum purple plates from Switzerland. In Switzerland, they put it, it's regulation and they put it with the phone they give you as in your pack. So you put it on the battery of your phone. What it does is aluminum, but they realign the molecular structure of the aluminum to, to a certain polarity. So it doesn't look like, it feels like aluminum, but if you look at it, the grains are different. What that does, it takes the fastest thing in the universe coming from the sun. The fast, the largest thing that goes the speed of light is called tekian. Right now they're flying through us so fast our body can't crop it. But if you anodize any metal, change the molecular structure, when it goes through the metal, it slows down and your body, oh, and your body grabs it. So I usually do stuff like that. Parents do all, they have all kind of energetic stuff. Volcanic, volcanic ash being made and my wife have near a computer into pendants and stuff you could use for that. So there's all kind of remedies for that. If not, your body has to use glutathione to clean your system because what they do, they call um, cytosis. Your cell starts producing gunk. And um, so you, the glutathione stock goes towards defeating those, correcting those, you don't have enough for yourself. Have problem itself and others, autism, number 11, EMF, <coughs> electromagnetic frequencies. Number 12 is digestion. Remember, I said there's two brains, there's critical brain, enteric brain. This brain has more neurons than the whole spinal cord and the brain stem combined. This is part of your gut, part of a specific muscle there. So not only good muscles, good stomach muscles you should have, you should have a nice clear gut with high, but with um, ma ma microbial biome. Again, you fermented foods. Make sure you have fermented foods in your diet, kefir. Uh, you look, if you're Italian, serve, search fermented, traditional Italian, Japanese, Chinese, whatever you always have, but kefir is really good because kefir has all the species. It's like your gut, your gut is like America, Belize, Canada, and, and they can't go here. It's like they have borders and stuff. The kefir has all, if you make it, I make my own kefir. You make your own kefir. My wife made the kombucha and, and probiotic ginger beer, no alcohol. Um, you, the kefir is the superior one because if you buy it in the shop, it's 17 species of bacteria. If you make it 64 species and they just repopulate, you know? So digestion, I'll say this, when you're doing all these things, 
Before you do all these fancy things so you don't get discouraged, you have to detox. I could send a detox bath if anybody in need, send it a detox bath that I use. I do that protocol first, detox, then you bill. You don't want to bill, you're wasting money. <clears throat> so digestion is eating properly, having fermented food, toileting regularly and stuff, but also um, physical health. So if you're bloated, a lot of people, they're like, oh, I'm fat, I'm fat. More, if you touch the fats like that, most of it is bloat. Is the candida, other bacteria and parasites, bad bacteria and parasites in the body. They're eating and they're producing waste, mainly in the form of methane, and they're um, making you um, bloat, bloat, yeah? Bloat. You're not fat. If you're bloated, if you're bloated, you're not healthy. You need to get rid of that. And there's a lot of stuff. Okay? Again, you could ask for this thing, but Michelle asked me, to just work on this, so I um, just keep to this. Okay. <clears throat> issue 13, there's one more issue, and then we, then we've, oh, this is, um, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, I thought it was 14, it's 13 issues. Haven't done this for a while, sorry. So the last one is too much testosterone. Another name for autism is excessive testosterone syndrome. So <clears throat> what happened, <clears throat> a lot of the makeups, in modern time, a lot of the makeup that women put on, they're made from urine and from bulls and cows and stuff and you know. You know? So when, when the, the lady is pregnant with a boy, with a child, and they put this makeup on, it goes in estrogen. And then the male body especially sees the estrogen, it responds by producing more testosterone. So excessive testosterone. So you find a lot of the girls with autism too, they tough, the muscle structure, similar. Like I know once there's a weird thing that happens when they're 18, it's different milestones with people with autism. When they're 18, they grab, a lot of the places where they are, they just drill the stuff to the floor because the girls they grab. When it's like a last kind of developmental thing that causes some behavior. Grab the table with one hand, it's a huge table. Dinner table flipping, very powerful, high testosterone. Even the girls, they have high. So that's on testosterone. So be careful, the type of buy natural makeups and stuff. Ahimsa makeup, makeups that are not tested on animals and stuff. You can't live like that. You, you know, you can't go to a park, push a swing and turn your back and the swing hit you and you get a brain damage. Oh, the swing hit me. You push, you get a reaction. That's karma. You can't go get things that animals have died to give you and unless it's really, really, really necessary. You have to be practical. Some cultures are in the snow. They are in the cold in Antarctica. They can't grow oranges and stuff. They have to eat seals. But these people generally you find they're respectful to them. They're not having at parties with the meat in their hand laughing and chucking out food, they're wasting and stuff like that. Filling the animals with stuff so they grow quicker and stuff. Be careful the things you consume because action or nature don't care if you know or not know. Nature doesn't care. If you're doing actions, you will get a reaction. So this is a reaction to all these fancy makeup. I don't know the brands, Chanel, blah, 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 blah. Whatever you put on that stuff, your kid in there when you're pregnant. So you buy natural stuff, you know? And so those are, those are it with the things with autism. <clears throat> The 13 things that stress the one thing that cause autism. Um, and this is what I was asked to present to you. Hopefully it helped you to, to understand a bit more different autism. It's good to know the cause of things. And, and hopefully it helps you to go on and you do your own research and think out of the block. Okay? Daniela, Namaskaram. And hope you enjoy the rest of the um, Belize Yoga Festival 2021.